Good Thursday afternoon, radio audience, FaceTime <laughs> audience. Um, Tom Matuska here with the Matuska Taxidermy Supply Company. It's Thursday afternoon live with Brett Wingfield. And uh, another nice day in paradise here. It's warming up. Oh my gosh. Hardly even go ice fishing anymore without your um, knee boots and hip boots and waders because there's a lot of water on the ice. There is. Um, I bet it doesn't last much past the weekend. It's going to go fast. And, and four wheelers, there's a few four wheelers out there, but they're spraying up a lot of, a lot of water. And I'm seeing fewer and fewer big vehicles out there, like maybe mm -hmm. none after today. And uh, everything's a little mud hole around here um, until the frost goes out. But I heard it was a beautiful day and I didn't get out. I get <laughs> inside all day long. It's supposed to be 60s next week and no freezing temps anymore. Open water fishing's coming right up around the corner. Um, and if you saw us last week, um, week before two? Nope. Nope, just last week. <laughs> we uh, started on a pack mount, just uh, showing you a few different ideas with, with a deer pack mount. And that is something like this. They're extremely, extremely popular. Um, you can use them with bear, you can use them with um, deer, you can use them with all kinds of different creatures, and we're seeing some really, really creative um, ideas. Yeah, we saw a bear. Somebody sent in a bear not nice very long bear, ago. Yeah. It was really nice. Well done. Very, very well yeah, done. Look at our, um, look at our Facebook postings. I think, and you'll see it on there. And yeah. um, um, you can add all kinds of additives to them. You see them with hatchets. You see them with. Blankets, bank, canteens. bunk roll blankets, yeah. canteens. Um, some people are seeing how many different items they can <laughs> get on their pack mount. Um, but uh, all kinds of different things, hatchets and blankets and, and uh, rolled up hides and oh my. What, whatever you think you can simulate a mount coming out of the hills yeah. on somebody's back. And uh, mm -hmm. There are no rules to pack mounts. Um, no. You can you can uh, have big, big, big deer. You can have small deer. You can have does. You can yep. bears. There's no rules. Um, angles makes no difference at all. Yeah, we kind of broke some rules. We added to the neck, made the neck longer and last we're week. We're gonna break more rules too. <laughs> we're gonna we we're gonna pack mount out of the box. <laughs> uh, last week on this one. We put a, a board on the back so we can put it on a mounting stand. We, we like to work on mounting stands. You can do it on your lap, but um, we took a, just a piece of plywood and screwed it to those two cross members. And I think, um, I think we'll also, when it comes time to mount this onto there, we're gonna put a piece of plywood between these two so we yeah. have something to screw to. Um, you could use any of these cross pieces. I think the new pack mounts coming out are gonna have a piece of plywood that does not protrude oh. through, the, through the webbing here and uh, something you can screw to and fasten your deer head on. Nice. Um, but there's all, all different kinds of styles. And um, I think pack mounts are what fifteen percent off this week with our I think so. with our li with our live broadcast I think. So we took um, one of our changeout heads. This is a um, XP changeout head. It is. And um, we just added a little a little neck to it. They come about this long, and you can stop there. Um, you can have them come straight out. That's what yep. a lot of people do. Um, we just were trying to come up with something a little bit different, so we're gonna have it angled so the horns are gonna come out here. But like we said, there's no rules. It's That's right. whatever whatever you feel like doing. And um, we put the, the antlers on. We put um, one of the new noses on. And uh, we're gonna treat this. We, we also put a board in the back, just so that yep. we can, like I said, we like to put stuff on mounting stands so we don't have to worry about symmetry and levelness and things like that. We can level things up. And even though it's dead, we kind of want to do it in a level fashion, yeah. kind of. Um, yeah. So we're going to um, treat this just like a full shoulder mount. And yeah. we've put the nose on, we put the antlers on. Um, and this, 
um, is cut, our cape was cut all the way down the back. Yes. And even on a short cut, you're gonna end up sewing a little bit anyway. So we just left, left the antlers right on. Normally we'll take our antlers off on a full shoulder mount and yep. we will slide the skin on. Then we put the antlers on mm -hmm. and then we'll sew up the little T or seven or Y, whatever incision, incision you have. Um, but this one, we're gonna have an inch or two extra sewing because of the way we did it. And so we're gonna cut the lip slot. Mm -hmm. Nothing to do on the nose because that's all gonna be instant for us. Um, we're gonna cut the tear ducts. We're gonna set some eyes. We're gonna put some ears on. Um, and the ears are up to you and the eyes are up to you. Do you want a fresh alive um, pack mount or do you want uh, that's a, you know, <laughs> whatever you want for realism, it's going to be completely up to you. So we may play with angles a little bit and, and ideas as we go here, because this is a little new to us also. Um, we'll rough the form too. And, yep. Treat your form just like the front end of a full shoulder. Um, this yeah. is kind of important. If you're doing, you, these pack mounts aren't going to be a cheap item. You know, they're going to be a, a major trophy for the customer. Um, and um, they don't have to be great big, you know, monster record book antlers no. either, but the work that you put into them are going to be the same as if they were. So um, treat them just the same as a full shoulder mount, I think. So with I that, so. should we get started? I think so. We better. That's a lot to do. That's a lot to do, yeah. Um, so where would you like to start? Should we... Cut some lips? Cut some... Cut, or rough cut a lip slot? Either way. We can cut a lip slot quick and then sure. give them to you and then you can. So we'll just turn him over like this. I'm gonna be lazy and sit down. So to cut the lip slot, I think we'll treat it, like you said, just like we would a shoulder mount. And um, we'll turn him upside down. And we're just gonna go in with a very small drill bit in a rotary tool, Milwaukee rotary tool. And we'll start on a 45 degree angle, bring it around. As we approach the front, we're going to bring it more upright and we will continue around to the back corner and then we'll open up the back corners just a little bit, just to accommodate a little bit of space there. Um, and you got him in there, Kate. You can use, it doesn't matter what tool you use. Some people use hand tools. Uh, some people use lip slot cutters. Um, the little drill bit works really good for us. Yeah, yep. So I'll go ahead and get it, get that started. And again, we're just gonna go on a 45 degree angle. Go in. Now I'm pretty much vertical, and I'm just going to drop it back to a little more of a 45 as I go back. Now one thing worth noting is that I did not go really deep where the uh, artificial nose is going to be closest to the form. So I kept, I kept it a little more shallow right here, um, where it's going to be close to the artificial nose. And then we'll just come in and blow that out. You can take a little bit of sandpaper if you'd like to clean that up. Um, I might, might uh, just go around quick. I've got a little file here, very, very small file that I can slide around that edge. And that will just clean that right up. Just like so. And that's just going to accommodate the space for our lip skin, which we've thinned very, very thin. 
and it's gonna, we're gonna be able to tuck both the top and the bottom lip into that groove and uh, close up the mouth. Do you wanna show them roughing them up? Sure. <laughs> like that? Get him. <laughs> okay. Um, any of these forms, like we've said before, any of these forms are made with a mold release, so they're kind of slick, and I think we talked about that last week. And so um, it's nicest if you can scratch these up in some sort of manner. Um, you can use, you can use uh, mannequin prep if you want to. You can use... Um, different things, you, you can wipe them down with lacquer thinner. Yeah. Um, the cheapest and easiest for us is one of our form roughers and the detail form rougher I like to yep, use. I like that it'll, one. It'll get into all fine areas and because of the, we're trying to prevent drumming. So drumming occurs when the leather shrinks and stretches from high point to high point, leaving a hollow area underneath. So we tr we're gonna treat this just like one of our Full shoulder mounts and we're gonna scratch this up. I won't spend the time to scratch the entire um, mannequin up just because of the noise it makes on the microphone but this will give you an idea. Um, don't spend 20 minutes roughing up a, a head mount. It's just really fast and easy and all you're gonna do is basically get the surface and don't, these XP forms are pretty detail rich. They've got a lot of detail in blood vessels, muscling. Um, don't do anything to get rid of the detail. Instead, all you're gonna do is scratch the surface so that the glue sticks. And you would go over the whole thing? I'd go over the whole thing and um, any of these little, little muscles, jaw muscles and stuff, you can take these little, um, finish roughers, these little detail roughers, and if you turn them on a corner, you can get way down in the valleys like that. Now, something that really, really helps me when I'm mounting deer is you're gonna have certain areas that are susceptible to pulling away. Mm -hmm. um, eyes pull away, lips pull away, noses, all kinds of different areas pull away. One area that I like to spend a little extra attention to is the tear duct, and this is real slick, slick, slick foam. And if you tuck your skin, even even that glue. I mean, we're going to use Pro One High Pace and Pro Pro One sticks to everything, but even that has trouble sticking to a mold released mannequin. So I like to take this little detail rougher and hit the area around that tear duct. And by scratching that up, now that Pro One has something to really stick to really, really well. Okay? Go ahead and do your eyes also. Because when you tuck your eyes, if this is all slick around here, um, it's going to be pulling like crazy and sliding yeah. on that slick skin. Another area that will really help you out is if you ever have your lips slide out or pull out as it dries, um, rough this up. Everybody's really good at roughing up all this other area and the big surfaces, surface areas of the mannequin, but you forget the important parts that are gonna cause you problems later. So I like, I like to have that a little rough. Just so that glue has something to stick to. And I would do the whole thing. Um, this poured foam back here is already rough. It has a texture. Not necessary to rough this up. I would rough all this, rough all that, all that, everything under the chin, just so you don't have any slick surfaces. And then, um, another area, you did the lip slot. We like to cut the Tear duct? Tear duct? Should yeah. I do that? I think so. I'm going to turn him around here if I can so I can tip him up. There we go. This is a Bob Fothery mounting stand and they're extremely 
versatile and adjustable. And great for this type of work for holding your mouse. Okay, now, um, this is a tool that we kind of like to use. And is that called a detail tool? I think it is, yep. Um, and it's a, a little ceramics tool. And it's got a curved, curved type surface here and it's kind of sharp. And the tear duct does not go straight in. A lot of people cut that tear duct straight in like this. The tear duct doesn't go straight in. It lays underneath, up underneath, the surface of this lobe up here. And this little curved tool is great for cutting your slot for your tear duct. And it cuts a nice little slot. We do this on our little shoulder mannequins just the same as we would on this little pack mount. And now I have a very, very thin, tuckable cut that goes at the same angle that tear duct did in real life, way up under here. Now, if you want to get even craftier, get a second one of these and dull it down, cut the sharp tip off and make it dull. And you can tuck your skin using the dull one, but you cut your crack using the sharp one. Pretty That's helpful. handy. That would put your skin in on the same angle that the cut went in. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. All right. Um, what's next? Um, you did tear ducts. Do you want to do eyes? I can do some eyes. You're going to have to tell me what a pack mount eye looks like. It's going to look exactly like you make it. <laughs> um, um, when we do eyes, we're going we're gonna to treat this just like a, a full shoulder mount. And we would put... Um, nictitating membranes in it, caramels, so. yeah. all that. I like to have a place for my nictitating membrane where to go. And so I'm going to cut a little slot out of the front corner of this eye. And all I'm doing is, is when, when these are sculpted and so that we can get them out of the mold, um, the inside of this eye rim is rounded slightly so that they, they can be demolded really easy. Um, so I just kind of sharpen that up and I want a place for my membrane to go. So I'm going to take that same little detail tool, a little sharp tool. This is going to be all way up under the clay so nobody's going to see it. But I'm going to make a little trench that will allow me to tuck my today membrane way up in there. And it will also, if I want to give any eye rotation, it will allow me um, to be able to position that eye in a different manner. Okay, would you give me some clay? And we're using, um, you can use any kind of clay. We use a lot of critter clay uh, by Ave Studio. Um, Critter clay is a good product. We also use animal clay, but critter clay mm -hmm. is kind of our go-to. Another thing I'm going to do, I'm going to cut a very sharp point at my number one corner. Another thing the, the sculptors and the mold makers don't quite get yet. And this is that um, front corner. When you do your eye set, our beginning point is going to be that number one corner right there. I'm going to test fit my eye to make sure that it'll lay in here, and it does. Okay, and we're going to just set this eye and position the head and see what it, what it kind of I looks think, like. I think, yeah, that would be great. Probably should be doing the other one, shouldn't I? For well, that's look. the show side. This is the show side. I'll do yeah. the other one real quick. Now that I've done that that far, I get to see this twice. Good positive reinforcement. You could have said, why don't you do the show side instead of the back <laughs> side? Well, I thought there was some strategy there. <laughs> no questions today? No. We do have one, um, one on YouTube from 
Southern Outdoors, and they are wondering how much money it is to send to the hide, to send your hide to the tannery. Oh gosh, we do a lot of tanning of our own here, and we send a lot to the tannery, and I'm gonna bet the tan of hide's gotta be 60s, doesn't it? I bet so, probably upward of 60 anymore. Um, Plus for a cape, shipping. yeah. Plus shipping, Plus shipping there and back. So you're gonna be the better part of $100 by the time it's done, I would say. And then we've got James Deal who says, love your show, was hoping we could <laughs> give a shout out to my granddaughter, Riley Deal. She's watching with him right oh now. Oh my God. Riley Deal is a big deal. That I is a big a deal. Shout out to Riley Deal. <laughs> I like the name. That is a good name. That's a fun one. And then we got Craig Robertson who says, looking good boys. Oh Do my you gosh. Use a standard drill or modified? Standard. I would say drill standard. Bit. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yep. And I apologize for not getting your message that you sent me on Tuesday till today. <laughs> well, that, that's kind of the time difference <laughs> from Australia. Yeah, we'll yes. call it that. <laughs> and then we have Craig Metz who says, hello, Tom, Craig my Metz? former and <laughs> and Brett, my former Cabela's taxidermy co-worker. Yes. Craig in Southwest Minnesota. Not very far away in Ballotin, I think. Hi, Craig. Okay, give me... What you need? Well, I'm gonna... I'm going to act like I've not done this before. Take me down there. Yep. Um, you're a little high. Can you drop down? Mm -hmm. There Good. you go. There we go. Something like that. Good. Tighten him up. Is that how he's going to go on there? I think so. Good. Go ahead. Okay, now I take a little clay in the just enough. All we want is enough to stick this to the back of the back plate. On these XPs, the back plate should be um, pretty close to a 45, which is what we want. And I'm going to line up my pupil oh do you think pupils level on a dead deer i don't i i don't know i don't think they would typically <laughs> you you give them the the physics of pupil rotation um and i'll put it in <laughs> um, you put me on the spot and what we were talking about was just on a live deer the pupil will remain level um, or horizontal based on the attitude of the deer. So if, he's, if he is in a relaxed position, um, no matter his head angle, up or down, his pupil will try to right itself. Um, I have heard a few different um, opinions on at what point it can't continue past level. I've heard that as he raises his head, once his nose breaks the plane of his eye, the pupil will start to follow the head angle. Um, and also, um, in a downward angle, it can stay level very vertical. But, uh, and we have a photo of a oh deer my gosh, we do. In, in the deer <clears throat> eye photo book that it's like he's drinking out of uh, water, drinking out of a yep. stream or something, and his pupil is perfectly horizontal to the ground. Yeah, horizontal pupil, nose is almost completely vertical. Then we have a question from Mike Chesla, and he says he has a mule deer from an outfitter that looks like they employ Edward Scissorhands <laughs> to skin the tear ducts. Would you try to stitch up all the slices or trust your hide paste and keep an eye on drying? It was on the tear ducts? Correct, yep. This to the skin. I myself would ducks. stitch them up because I like to push against thread rather than a hole. Me too. I agree. I like to put a couple stitches in the tear duct. It helps keep things together. You don't certainly don't have to, especially if it's all going to go up in the tuck skin um, or up into the tuck groove. But yeah, I'm going to make a, an alert live deer to start with and <laughs> and make him we can, slowly deceased. We can go from uh, there. I like to use one of these uh, angular shader paintbrushes. I guess this is about a 
quarter to a three eighths inch angular shader and it just works good for me to shape an eye. And that's one of Mandy's new two-ended paint brushes with the sculpting it's tool on the back side. The sculpting tool on the hand. Oh, you like it? I do like it. Oh my <laughs> gosh, that was one of those I had to get and wait for you to pick it up and paint. That's good. Makes sense to me. Okay, now I have the clay kind of allotted around here and now I'm just gonna feather it down onto the face. Now remember, with um, a good quality form, sculpted by a knowledgeable sculptor, um, you shouldn't have to build up a lot of anatomy around here, um, or you're telling me um, that you know more than the sculptor does, and you might. But we've got some pretty knowledgeable, talented sculptors. So you mount up the head as usual, and when would you roll up the hide? Ooh, we haven't figured that out. We That's a long time from now. <laughs> it's two episodes from now. <laughs> um, okay, I like eyes. I think eyes make the mount. On a dead pack mount, I don't want to close them up, but for realism, I don't want to make him look perky. <laughs> this is a big, big debate in the pack mount world that is now Ooh. made. <laughs> to make the deer look dead as it should, tongue out, mm. blood, eyes, you know, or do you make it look like something you'd want to hang in your house? Can so, we compromise? I, well, I don't that's like, the issue. I'm not a fond tongue out person. Um, even when I shoot a deer and want a picture taken, I do everything I can to not have the tongue out. Cut it off. Um, that's pretty morbid. <laughs> I've seen that done and maybe done it. Um, kind of your choice. I think my vote would be tastefully deceased. I think it that's needs to look appropriate to a memorabilia board. It needs to look like it didn't just climb onto the pack and wants to go home with the guy. Um, but at the same time, I, I do think it needs to be tasteful. I think we have a responsibility as taxidermists to make sure that we're representing ourselves and our industry and sport in a tasteful manner. That's a good way to put it. That's my vote. I agree. <laughs> okay, you. come here and look at if, if this is... I think that looks tastefully deceased. Tastefully deceased. I think he looks very tasty. <laughs> Something like that. That's now. Could we use reflective eyes? Maybe. Yeah. I think you can. You know, when people take pictures with their deer, they're always those blue. Sure. But but we also have the dead eye, the blind eye. Blind eye. Yeah. That's a blind one. And it could work. That could work too. Okay, do we want to... I like it. He could look a little... I don't want to go too much I, I'm, pers I'm personally tastefully done as well, but the people in the pack world that like them are the ones that are, that is what it's supposed to look like, that's well, realistic. I might get an app. <laughs> <laughs> but, it but if it's, where it's going and on the customer. If it's going in my so. house, it's going to have... Tasteful eyes. Yeah. Eugene wants to know if you have, do you have Tom's glasses in stock? Oh, those I are fancy. Of these. I kind of like them. Those are fancy. I'm going to get a little water. Yeah. Eugene? When you get to be my age, <laughs> you're not going to care what color they are, just that you can find them when you need them. All right, Rick is asking, if a customer requests his mount to show vein or muscular detail, how do you make them pronounce? Does time of year as far as different lengths of the deer's hide make a difference? Is the is clay or rolled foam like bird neck material used? Thank you. 
Um, that's a great question. That's a really good question. Um, I think we've kind of talked a little bit about it. I think a lot of it would have to do with the cape that they bring in, um, how much of it would show. You have a good experience with, with having a piece that you've had some recommendations on. Well, yeah, years and years and years ago, I entered a deer in a competition and um, um, had, it, had it judged in, the judge in New Mexico. And the judge's comment was, a long-haired deer will never show wrinkles on his back. And I thought, you can't tell me. I have 13 live deer out here that I feed every day. I ought to know, you know. So this was like, I suppose, in March. I come back and our deer have nice long hair, you know. And, and so I'd get behind them and I'd whistle and they'd turn around, you know. And um, no wrinkles, you know. Uh, in summertime, they were wrinkled up like crazy. Their skin was like an accordion. And in November, you could still see it, but not quite as much. In December, you could not see it at all. And um, I was quite sure that just because I raised them that I knew, but I didn't know anything, you know? Um, well, anyway, that's kind of how I think we'd start there. And yeah, then we want to nice. set some ears for these people. I think so. And we do it uh, again. Everything we do here is exactly the way we would do it on our, our full shoulder mounts. Um, these are Kerry Cochran um, ear liners. Yeah. Are they call the ultimate ear line. Oh, they might be. That sounds familiar. Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, there you go. again, you want glue to stick. So with our form rougher, we're going to rough them up, rough the insides because that's where people have drumming issues. And there's a place that gives me fits when I'm trying to get my ears to stick. And that is right up under here. And I don't have a tool to get up in there. I can kind of get up in there. So we like to use our, our cuts all cylindrical bit. And it, it's, it's carbide and it's real rough. It, it grinds really fast. And I'm just gonna take it and get up underneath there. And any areas that you can't reach. And by spending that few little minutes to rough that, you can take a drill bit, you can take anything. Yeah. It's just what our go-to tool. Um, just make sure that this is roughed up all the way around. Yeah. Okay, show all me, the low show valleys. me this um, tastefully deceased. <laughs> tastefully deceased. Here. So Zach is wondering, so you did the eyes and not putting the hide on right after? Not yet. Not yet. We're gonna sculpt an ear butt and then we will likely cover these um, and just for the purposes of time, we'll probably cover these till next week. We'll mount him. We'll mount him next week. And then Gary wants to know: in a tube cape, is a tube cape better than an open cape? For this, I don't think it's going to matter. I don't. Yeah, I, I don't think it would matter because we're only dealing with that, like you said, that short incision, anyways. And you um, might, if you had a long, if you had a, a tube cape, you might be able to make it work for you and your gathered remainder of skin. Yeah. I'm thinking that we're gonna have a little bit of clearance. We're gonna wanna stay fairly tight on the backside for clearance sake. And these ears could fall, but I think they might be nice just back, tastefully. I like it. Deceased, <laughs> tastefully back. Um, but we're going to pay attention. One of the nice things about our XP form is that the ear canal, these ear bases are pre-sculpted for you and they're notched to allow the ear to accept the base of an ear butt um, in a really nice um, back position. You don't have to remove a bunch of foam. So I'm just going to set that back in there. It all conforms and nicely. And they fit right in there where they're they supposed do. to. Yep. The bottom of the ear base indexes into the, the ear canal or where the canal would enter into the skull. And uh, 
turn this just a little bit for Kate to see. And now we would, I'm just, I've just stuck a pin in there for temporary purposes. And then I'm gonna refer to a cast. This is an ears back cast. I think, is this Mark's cast? Mark Mattery. I think this is Mark's. Um, and you can see the basic muscle structure here is all outlined and highlighted. This is, um, I think it's re-sculpted over a cast of a real deer. I think they skinned um, out a deer really, really, really close, made a mold of it, yeah. and then made a cast of it, and then enhanced the muscles so you can see them. Tooled them and marked them, and then um, they've been nicely labeled. So I'm just gonna build a little bit of structure here, and then we'll lay these muscle groups on one at a time. Brett, will and we'll you go hold quickly. That up again and show, okay, can you get it on that? If you have that at home, they don't come numbered. So if you want to number the one you have at home with the numbers that secret uh, that is the layering that you would start with. Um, Mark. That kind of came from Brian Olson. Brian Olson gave us a nice eight and a half by eleven with a sketch that he made of this and in when he gives seminars, he will tell you put this one in first, that one in second, this one is on top of that one, you know, and he does that's how he does it and that's how they come out in that order in a little more natural because one muscle does lay over the other. I thought that was going to go to the who's on first, what's on second, third base. Um, so we'll just build a little bit of structure. Man, now everybody sees those numbers. I'm going to have to put them on in that order. <laughs> um, I'm just going to start by building some of this underneath. We're going to build it right up onto the antler, up onto the skull, on the antler base, just shy of it. Um, come around and build the backside. You got to tell good stories while I do this because well, this isn't a fast thing. I'll tell you thing. what I will tell because there's going to be some confused people out there. Um, the way we ever morphed into this method of mounting deer was because of. Um, the Competitor's Choice Sculptors, as well as the XP Sculptors, and they give seminars at, um, they'll be at the World Show, they'll be at the National Show, they'll be at all the different state shows, um, oftentimes at our booth, and they're giving um, seminars on ear setting. And most of you, or many of you, will take an ear butt, you'll glue it up into your ear skin, and you'll take a tennis ball size wad of clay and cram it up there. And if you're really, really good and have a, a knowledge of anatomy, you will be able to, with your fingers, sculpt what Brett's doing here on the outside. However, they try to teach people anatomy and by showing them what the muscles look like on the outside and where the ear correlates to those muscles, there's a scutiform cartilage up here, which is pretty important. And they will show you how to build all this one muscle at a time. And you get real fast at it. It's not a, um, you can drag this out for an hour long show like we're doing, but typically um, you'll get real fast at it and you will get one ear butt the same size as the other ear butt. Then some of you are wondering, why would you do that when you have to still get this into your ear skin and how are you gonna get your cape over? Um, next, what we would do is paint that, and we'll do it before we're done here today, we will paint that clay with our Pro One Hide Paste. Um, our Pro One Hide Paste will form a kind of a saran wrap plastic shell or covering over that clay, and the clay will not break apart, and you can pop it off and glue that up into your skin of your cape, and you'll have a muscle that is very, very accurate. Then you can slide your skin over your mannequin and your ears will index right back into this spot and the ears will have really accurate ear butts. And when you get practiced up at this a little bit, um, it really, really will give you a, a lifelike ear muscle. And ears are where um, many people kind of fall down in the lifelikeness of their mounts. So I'm just going to lay some muscles on here, and I am going to use my little cheat sheet right here. I'm going to lay in muscle number one. That's going to tie down. It's very, very thin. If you guys are 
creating muscles, one little quick tip is just to take your clay and lay it right on top of your cast and kind of get a size and proportion. And notice this number one muscle ties in just behind like that. So I am just going to come in here and lay that muscle in place. Right there. Kate, do you have the air cast on the sale? No. Nope. I doubt if we... Yeah. Somebody didn't tell her to do it. I was going to say that's probably <laughs> our fault. That's we'll not Kate. That's not... That's not, that's our fault. Um, I mean, we're teaching the students. We're, we're doing game heads in class this week, and we have the nicest batch, other than Craig Robertson's, of course, the nicest <laughs> batch of white tail. We do and have. Mule deer, and and deer, antelope. And pronghorn. They've got um, a couple of those. They're doing an exceptional, exceptional job. They are. I will. I will. I'm going to do number two now. And number two is going to connect, if I refer back to the cast, number two is going to connect there and it's going to run right back toward the front of the eye. So it's going to come in here. And if you look, another really nice feature of the XP is that the termination of those muscles, of these muscles, is right here on the, on the mannequin. So we know I don't need to stretch this all the way back to the eye, I don't, it's only going to go to there. So I'm going to lay it on here for size and shape. Make sure I'm not too big. And then I'm going to turn around and put it right back here. Oh, so you're getting the texture off of it too. Um, texture's on the bottom, but. Oh, I thought you turned it around. I didn't, Good I could have, I could have. Yeah, thought. I could have. <coughs> Then it'd be like Corey's bird head. Mandy has a little um, ear muscle texture tool <laughs> that we that have will to be available next week. So that is number two. Um, and quickly, I'll run through three, four, and five. Um, number three is going to be the tie-in and is going to overlap the end or the termination of number two. You use awful big words. <laughs> what? Which? Oh, termination. Oh, that stops. Where it quits. I, I say, I talk where this muscle stops. Stops. End point. That one I had a little bit too big before I laid on there, so I'm just going to take it right off like that. And peel it off. And remember, these muscles are like bands. They're not big, round, thick. Um, big, round, thick muscles they're they're thin bands and so this one i can see right there is going to run up just like so and the students were asking what if you're doing this or what if you're doing that what if you're doing a wildebeest or you know whatever it happens to be and this is probably really terrible advice to give you but in my mind every animal like this has a similar muscle structure they may be sure. bigger they may be smaller um, but you can fool a lot of people by recreating a white tail um, marks white tail ear cast onto your ears and just make it size proportionate to the animal you're doing absolutely i don't think anyone would ever know now the scutiform is a rigid piece of cartilage that will rotate with the ear it sits over a muscle structure and is highlighted here. I'm going to rebuild some of that shape first. I, I'm a little bit weak right up here on top. So I'm going to rebuild that before I put the next muscle over it. And I'm just going to blend that in. What do you think of the Bondo method of ears? A lot of people have really good success with the Bondo method. We've done it. I, I did it when I was developing my technique with deer. I did it for probably a year, year and a half, um, and was never happy with my results. Um, I have sat at the same table with Joe Combs, and Joe Combs does the most beautiful Bondo ear of anybody I've ever seen. Um, it did not work for me. 
Um, James wants to know, when you do the veins in the ears, do you use clay and paint it, or do you use fiberglass? I've used hot glue and done, thought I did pretty well. Um, yeah, that's... Um, sometimes, especially with African ears, I'll take a, a, a pan and draw where I want my veins, then I'll take a hot glue gun and run it and try to follow my marks on there. And then when I mount the ear um, with the glue on there, I will take a little tool similar to Mandy's little sculpting tool on the end of the paintbrush, and I would run it right up against the veins and get the glue out of there. And um, works works great for me on animals like African animals, which don't have any hair. Zach wants to know if the pack mounts are on sale still, and they will be live on sale after the show tonight through tomorrow. So they will come back on sale and what do, through tomorrow. What do they have to do to get that sale? They have to go online and place an order or call one of the lovely ladies we have answering the phones and give them Fbook 15 for a code, and you will get 15% off your pack mounts and a few other items that we talked about during the show. Nice. Oh, I see you're sporting the brand new windbreaker today. I mm -hmm. am. It's and nice I, out. I, We're I, the 40 with I see one up there. It's kind of a, a black and gray, bluey, uh, Payne's gray camouflage, isn't it? Yeah. It does have a camel pattern in the back. I like it's it. It's cozy. I wore it all day. All right, well, I've got just kind of the start of my structure here. It's not uh, by any means finished, but I think I've got in most of the muscle groups we're looking for. Notice these little ones head up, and we have just a little space here behind the antler burr so that the skin can come all the way forward and run up the burr and connect underneath the antler rather than being built all the way straight to the antler base. I know the deer guys are all going to be very critical of my. I don't think so. My I think they're gonna very say, oh. quick uh, interpretation here, but now when this is all blended together and uh, um, smoothed out, when that's glued up into the skin and you work your glue out, it's going to be um, really, really natural and very nice. Um and. I've heard you tell the students, and I completely agree, anything you do here, um, even if your proportions are a little out of place or your muscle locations aren't quite perfect, anything you do in pre-sculpting is going to put you a leg ahead of just a big wad of clay. Yeah, but um, I say that just because my proportions sometimes are not <laughs> well, what they're supposed to be, that's so what, I cover myself by saying that. And that's exactly what I was doing. Oh, Play-Doh tools. Uh -huh. I like this. I need some Play-Doh tools. Mandy. Now, the nice part about what Brett's doing here is <clears throat> we're gonna take that and coat it with Pro One High Paste or Dermagrip's another good product if you're using Dermagrip. Um, probably caulk, but any of the good high paste. And we're gonna let that sit overnight. And tomorrow, um, we'll probably wrap it with plastic because we're not going to finish this until next week and we're actually going to mount it, I think, aren't we? And I hope so. um, then um, it will keep this from breaking apart, but it'll also keep that clay manipulatable. Is that a word? I like we can it. Manipulate the clay. And uh, so if we get this sewn up, that clay, even though it's coated in that flexible hide paste, um, is going to be movable and we're going to look at that pack and we're going to say he looks a little too live. All we have to do is carefully bend that clay and that airliner back and down to make him look more deceased or maybe we want him more alert so we can bend it forward to make it more alert. So by doing an ear like this, um, what I like the best about it is the next day when I'm out the deer, um, I'm a I'm a great one for twinking my ears or not having my mind made up as to what I want for sure. So 
I think that ear with that rack would look so much nicer, a little more forward, a little more backward, a little farther down, and you're able to do it with this method. So you're not locked in to a hard, rigid ear butt that will never move. Tara's asking the code. It's FBook15 if you want to say it. FBook15. 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 I think we should all say 15% it. 15% off discount code. And I mean, that's on there? There's a lot on there, isn't there? I, I would think so. You got your um, Jerry Cochran ear liners. You got your pack mounts, which come in three different versions. You have your ear caps, which we'll add on the show, which come in forward and backwards. Or you can get both of them in a pair. There's a lot. Let me wait till I replace my nose. Oh my gosh. Is there a kit yet? Critically. A kit? Yeah. With head? Yeah. The only thing we haven't done yet is the bear that everyone wants. Oh, the on. bear. Bear. Bear kits. Bear needs paws. Yeah. We should have a little paw inserts. Or and maws. Maws and paws. Maws and paws. Let's see. The, no, the, the form rockers, your form rockers, regular and detailed critter clay, um, your lip slap cutting bits, the flexible bowls. Premium mache, bondo, form rasp. Wow. Everything to do one of these things. You can buy it all and on sale stuff tomorrow. Stuff is back in stock, too. That if you're following us on Facebook, you'll see all that. That's exciting. It is. We're like a one-armed paper hanger in the, <laughs> in the supply company. Um, I have never seen so many packers and pullers working like they do i mean uh two the, shifts of people making yeah. manufacturing pure craziness pure craziness uh and you know I, i'm not sure if the days of next day shipping are over or not but since COVID started there's been a lot of taxidermists doing a lot of taxidermy work and our little people are running their little crocs off <laughs> Um, hey, who's got the, the glitter Crocs in your office? Well, I got that for Emerson, but they're a little big, so I'm sending them back. Oh, she'll grow. She's a growing little girl. Easy. I've never seen, <laughs> I've never seen Stardust glitter Crocs before. They're, in, they're in not insulated or whatever. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Fleece lined. Uh -huh. um, do we have a giveaway this week? Yes, we do. And is it a detail rougher? Ooh. Yep, that's a good one. Yes, so a detail form rougher, and that goes to Rachel Lewis. And Rachel won by sharing and liking last week's live video. Rachel, you're going to like it. Um, to clean it up, just pound out any foam dust in it. Um, you can rough with it. We use this a lot when we mount this deer. We will have these, and we will use it to coax our skin so we don't hurt anything. We coax our skin where we want it. We even move our ear skin on the ear, ear um, liners where we want it. Um, we rough stuff up. It's very sharp, be careful, it will hurt. It does hurt. And for those that have one already, we do sell replacement pads, but ours are made out of plastic. So if you are replacing and you kind of, what do you call that? You can't get the screw to hold anymore. Oh, you these, strip it out. These. Yeah. How? What do you guys do? A um, little bit of super glue and screw it right down in. Epoxy will screw it right Bondo down in. And then if you have to replace these too many times, the threads in the plastic will. So Bondo, out. epoxy, super glue, anything like that to get. It to comes in two sizes. Comes in a regular. Mm -hmm. Comes in a detail. Uh, the detail has a little trench that the pad actually sits down in, so that it cannot slide off to the side. That is the best part. Marvelous invention. Marvelous Somebody invention. Somebody was brilliant to think of that. Somebody was. Um, are we going to mount him next week? We better, don't you think? I think so. Well, we should probably give him another ear and another eye. We'll do the ear and the eye. So when you join us next week, he will be ready. Um, we're going to see where he's going to index onto here. Um, maybe put a board in the back so that we can screw to him. And uh, I think next 
we the mounting process should go pretty fast. We'll maybe have so. one ear glued in ahead of time yeah. um, for you so you don't have to watch us do two. So we'll show you how to insert one ear, have the other eye set, have him all trimmed up. So like and share this video for your chance to win next week. And call us and don't forget to take advantage of the Facebook Live discount. Which that's right. And that's a big deal. That is. That's a big savings. You could, you could run a very, very, very profitable tax for me business if you watched our sales and our specials. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Took advantage of all of the you can opportunities. You twice the money as your neighbor down the street. Yep. So call us up 1-800-488-3256 or visit us online at www.matuskataxfirmy.com. Thanks for joining us once again. Appreciate having you. I hope we showed yep. you a little something. And uh, as you can probably tell, we're winging it a little bit. Um, <laughs> no. We don't do a lot of pack mounts, but because but we're gonna. such a hot item these days, you're going to want to have one in your showroom. So yes. get a set of antlers and a cape and do one. You'll be amazed at how many of your customers are going to come in and not think their deer is maybe big enough to mount. They're going to say, ah, oh, but I could do that. Absolutely.